Hello everyone, Amzal Adam here again. In today's episode, we're gonna be working on the Excursion. So this is a 2000 Ford Excursion. It has the 7.3 liter Power Stroke engine in it. Um, the issue I've been having with it lately is uh, when it's cold out, it's a little bit hard to start. Uh, it actually started last winter, and I noticed that if I plug it in for even half an hour or so, uh, it seems to start fine. Once I get the truck started and it runs for a few minutes, it'll start every single time. These are all signs of a glow plug issue. So this truck does have the glow plug control module on it rather than just the relay. Uh, so up until this point, what I've done is diagnosed that all the glow plugs themselves are good. Uh, I ohm checked them from the controller all the way to the block and uh, we have good continuity. Everything is within specification. I also checked the wiring from the glow plug control unit back to the ECU because it controls the glow plug control unit and all that wiring looks to be good as well. So, logically, the glow plug control unit is the failure point. So I've ordered a new glow plug control unit and we're gonna install that today and see if that fixes our problems. So here I have the OEM Motorcraft part. And one thing I will warn you about, if you do go online and you're trying to locate parts like this, when it comes to electronic relays and whatnot, always buy OEM. There are a lot of aftermarkets out there and the quality just isn't there. I'm not saying they're all bad, but you just never know what you're going to get. Um, and also there's no warranty. So this unit retails for a little over $200. Um, because I have an account with Ford, I got it a little bit cheaper. But when you look online, I could actually find some of them that were as low as $55. How long would they last? Who knows? But with the Ford Motorcraft, it comes with a two-year warranty. So OEM on stuff like this is really the way to go. Guys, I also forgot to mention that when I pull the codes, it clearly shows a fault on a couple of the glow plugs and a miscommunication error with the glow plug controller. So it could have been either one, but and that's why I tested for the glow plugs first. Um, I have no problem replacing the glow plugs if that was the case, but I just don't see any reason to do it right now. Um, so what I'm going to do before I get started is I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to clear all of the codes, and then I will disconnect the batteries while I change out the module, and then plug it all back in, and then I can go to do the normal startup process and see if it pulls any more codes. Hopefully that code will be eliminated. Then we'll try to start the truck and uh, hopefully the problem will be gone. Now I haven't started, today's what, Saturday. Uh, the truck hasn't been started in, I think Monday was the last time I drove it. So it's been four or five days. We've had some pretty cool weather here. Um, so we'll go there. So got my little super chips control module here. Uh, yeah, I know not the best thing out there, but it's what the truck came with when I bought it. And for my intents and purposes, it did well, but right now we're just going to use it to clear the codes. So I'm going to go to diagnostics. We're going to go ahead and read the codes real quick first. So 0743, P0676, which is one of those glow plug ones, I believe. 678, so that's uh, number 6 and number 8 glow plug showing a fault. Uh, and a 683, so that shows three glow plug faults. And then the 670, which I believe is the glow plug control module. And I go in my memory, so don't quote me on that. And then we got that 743 again. So let's go ahead and clear all the codes. Yes, clear them. Clearing codes, please wait. So I'm gonna go through and double check. Go to diagnostics. Read code yes. As of right now, it's showing two. And it's a 0683. Yep, so it's just a, still got a glow plug code there. So it is going to keep returning. So we'll go ahead and shut it off. So now, like I said, I'm going to go disconnect the battery and then we will install the new module. So just as a little note, I want to point out that because my truck is lifted a little bit, and uh, sometimes it makes it very difficult to work on engine stuff, I use this Werner platform. Now, Werner's a ladder manufacturer, but this little platform helps a lot to get that extra elevation so that when I'm working up here, I can get to what I need. 
we got that negative terminal taken off. I come over here and undo the next one. So both negative battery terminals are now disconnected and the terminals have been moved away from the battery post as to not accidentally arc on anything. And I'm also going to throw a blanket up here. One for comfort and two helps from scratching and breaking stuff. Now the glow plug control module is this unit right there. It's got the two wires, or two wire clusters going to it, I should say. And there's really only two bolts that hold it in, so it should be relatively simple. Now, I got a few things in our way. I'm gonna take a moment to kind of tie up out of the way, just to make my job a little bit easier. Let me get the tripod set up so I can use both hands. So it looks like I have better access to the bolts with this heater hose out of the way, but I don't wanna drain the coolant, so I am just going to use this little teeny tiny bungee cord and see if I can't just pull this out of the way a little bit and secure it somewhere. I think that'll work. That gives me a pretty clear view to the bolt head. Uh, the next thing, we'll go ahead and take off the CAC tube because that'll give us access to the bolt on the back side. I think that'll give us just enough clearance. The only thing else that might be tricky is there's the little hose that goes from the map sensor to the intake manifold. So I think I'm gonna take that off. And it's just got a spring clamp that holds it on. Pull that up. We can just kind of tuck this out of the way a little bit. Now we should be pretty clear to get what we need to get to. Now there's a tab that you got to push to unlock these. And once the tab is pushed, something like a small pry bar or a big screwdriver, it's a good idea to just use it to push the connectors back. Now these plastic connectors, they're just that, they're plastic. You really don't need to put a lot of pressure on them. They can be broken very easily. At this point, it just should be the two 10 millimeter nuts holding it on. Do the rear one first, just cause it is a little bit more difficult to get to. Oop. Let's get the 10 millimeter socket on there. So now all that's remaining is there's a 10 millimeter nut on the back side and the front side. Once those are removed, the unit should come off. And just break them loose. You want to be careful not to drop these because there's a bit of a cavity down here that is difficult to retrieve drop nuts and bolts out of. So I'm keeping my finger there so that once I know what's unthreaded, keeping that positive pressure on the nut so that I don't drop it. Okay, both of the nuts are removed. They should just come right off. So now that I have the old unit and the new unit side by side, Compare part numbers, make sure they are in fact the same, and it looks like we're good to go. And that should just fall into place. Now I'm going to take the nut, 
put it in the end of the socket again and keep my finger there. Use it as a guide to line it up with the stud. But once I know it's on there, just hand start it. Do the same thing here. Give those a snug. They don't have to be really, really tight. Now we're going to plug our controllers in. Now normally I would tell somebody it'd be a good time to put a little bit of dielectric grease in these connectors, but I had just done that when I took it apart to do the ohm test to the glow plugs. So we're going to skip that step right now just because it's already been done. Make sure that the plugs are securely fastened. You should hear them click sometimes and a quick tug just to make sure isn't a bad idea. Take our vacuum line, go back to the intake manifold, take the clamp, slide it back down into position to secure the line on there. And this here is just protective cover. And actually, I'm feeling that line there is a little bit brittle. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to go check and see if I have any fresh line in the shop to replace it with. Because it's getting old. Like I said, this truck is a 2000. It's got 400 and... Uh, don't call me. 450 something thousand miles on it. Some of these hoses on here are still original. So as I come across them like that where they need servicing, I just replace them. All right, I got the, the CAC tube put back into place. Clamps are lined up where they should be. Oh. 11 millimeter socket. You can also use the 7 16ths on this. 11 millimeter and 7 16ths are basically exactly the same size. There are a few in the metric to SA conversions that will cross, but not very many. Okay, everything's double checked, everything is back together. We'll undo the heater hose. And now it's time to reconnect the negative battery terminals. snug check and make sure it's tight and then on to the driver's side terminal All right, good and secure. All right, so we're back in the truck and I've got the handheld plugged in. <clears throat> Waiting for it to get set up okay. Begin with the ignition off, press, mm. Turn the ignition on, do not start, press to continue. All right, so we're gonna go to diagnostics, read the codes, yes. No codes. Well, P1000. So we're going to. All right. So let's uh, let's clear the codes. Again. And just to double check, I'm gonna go in and read the codes. Yes. All right. So right now, all we have is the P1000. 
P1000 code means that there isn't enough information for the computer to determine whether there's any issues or not because the codes have been cleared and the vehicle has not been started or driven. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to start it. Now, the temperature here today is uh, probably high 60s, low 70s. It's not real cold. But the issue I was having with the truck, that's actually a time where I was having trouble getting it to start. It, it didn't have to be really cold out. So um, let's go ahead and shut this off and disconnect. All right. Wait to start light is on. Let's hope she fires up. All right. The light just went out. Now. That was a really good startup. Um, I'm pretty confident that without changing that glow plug control module, this truck would not have started, even though it's not that cold, but it was just being that finicky. So, uh, so I'm gonna drive it around a little bit and we'll see if uh, any other codes pop up, give it a chance to warm up and do its thing. Um, and then if need be in the morning, hopefully it'll be colder. Usually our temperatures drop a little bit lower at night here. It might only be down in the 40s or something, but um, then I can try it again in the morning just to verify that the problem is gone. And obviously over the next couple of days, especially if we have some really cold temperatures, which I believe we do have a cold front coming in either Sunday night or Monday. I'll have to check the weather to be sure, but that'll be a good test. And if this works, I'll be very thrilled. Uh, this has been troubling me for some time and uh, I'll be happy if it's done. All right, good morning, everyone. It is now the next morning and it did get down into the thirties last night. Now it's not quite that cold out here now, um, it's probably high 40s, low 50s, because um, it's a little bit later in the morning. But I figure we're going to go ahead and get this set up and uh, see if it starts easier. Now, I thought I'd try different views. I'm going to set you down here so you can actually uh, see it from the outside when it starts. Now that was just one cycle of the key and it fired right up pretty good. So I think we got the problem solved. All right, and with these conditions, I have no reason to believe that our problem has not been fixed. So I'm very happy with that. So at this point, we're gonna close the video. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, until the next time, keep those engines running.